Welcome back to Morgan Works Malden. I am here with Mr. Jonathan Wells, Head of Design here at the Morgan Motor Company. Hello, John. Hi. Uh, last time I saw you was last year at Not Geneva. Oh, yeah. When we didn't have a Geneva, you had just driven back from a truck um, and then Geneva and then uh, back to, back to Malden in a plus four. A lot has changed since then. What's new with you? A lot has changed since then, that's right. Well, we've, um, we've been busily carrying on here at Morgan, especially in our little planet of research and development. We've um, now a very nicely contained off-site design centre. Yeah, because last, last, last time I was here, you were sort of hidden away in a that's corner. That's right. But there's been loads of developments, and now that's you have your own design lair. That's right. It's, um, it's remarkable, really, how far we've come. When I first started, there was six or seven of us in a small asbestos-clad shed, and leaked water and flooded every year. Um, and now we're sort of in the mid-30s, I think, now, in a large design team, large engineering team, every part of the process, and we've got a off-site design facility just down the road, which the marketing guys call MDEC, Morgan's Design and Engineering Centre. Um, but it is a, it's a great facility, and over the last year, actually, it's really come into its own. Um, so to start with, we almost didn't know what to do with all the space, um, sort of parking some of our heritage fleet cars while we've been using the lockdown as a chance to get ahead on some of the experience centre. So it's been a bit of a car park, and uh, as things are opening up now, the cars are out, we've got an atrium, outside with big glass windows and in there we can see all of our design studies and future concepts so without saying what they are i've got this great view now of what the next well, next seven years of morgan looks like almost so um it's pretty cool you say you can't tell me but i'm i'm going to make you tell me <laughs> somehow um I, I don't know how but i'll figure it out but what has been announced over the last year so you, you have your your new amazing facility you have seven years so you've been looking at least at a couple of years that you have sort of told us about. Yeah. So GTR, what, what is that? So that's, um, <laughs> that's a really nice distraction to have. That's um, something we didn't see coming. Um, we had the opportunity as a company to uh, reacquire some of the old N62 V8 platforms, um, which essentially were the underpinnings of uh, Series 5 Aero 8 and Plus 8 for many years. And we said goodbye to those um, prior to the CX coming back. So whilst we'd um, you know, very excited about what the CX presented, you know, there was the naturally aspirated V8 and the soundtrack it provided, which was missed a little bit. Um, anyway, we had the opportunity to reacquire these platforms um, and we didn't see this coming. So we had the opportunity to quickly work out what it was that we were gonna do with these nine very special cars. Um, and we decided to do don't necessarily like the word homage, but we decided to do a, a best bits almost. All the stuff that we'd had on the drawing boards never quite made it to fruition. Um, we really wanted to provide a very global vehicle if we could. Um, and so we looked at all sorts of inspirations from various winning cars from all parts of the globe, really. Um, and pinned a lot of it on a very famous race car, which kind of opened the chapter on the aluminium chassis Morgan, a car called Big Blue, which was a a, a racing V8 Aero 8 predecessor, um, which was a very striking super 90s kind of car. And um, that's the flavor we've gone for. Um, so we've had a lot of fun with that really, everything from wheels and body kit enhancements, but everything being so low volume, it's not tooled up, it's entirely handmade. So we've got real craft happening. Every single louver is, is dressed in, um, you know, proper sandbag sheet metal craftsmanship. Um, so they really are crafted, really special pretty Larry. They sound great. They look, they look pretty striking. Um, and that's a project we're sort of working through now. So we're just starting to see those cars really come alive. So that's been fun. It's, um, it's a refreshing break. You're very constrained on production level vehicles, but to go back to an already pre-registered vehicle and do something, you know, unrestrained is um, quite refreshing. It, it already exists. There is room to improve. And yeah. I, I imagine knowing the Morgan Hardcore, they're all gone. Yeah. and everyone loves them and yeah. they can't wait to get them in the well, we did um, we've done a few release sketches and um, you can see from those that aerodynamics has a big influence which is cool um big strong colors um white wheels bright blue bodywork really um really exciting colorways um they sound really great but something quite unique because we've got a high door on there as well and a bespoke hard top we never did a hard top for plus eight so we've got a new hard top on the plus eight a high door so it's a really kind of enclosed fighter pilot cockpit um, which is pretty cool now we're standing next to Project 101. Yeah. That is also coming this year. Yeah. 
this tell is us um, about it. Talk, talk me through P101. Well, this is also another, um, you know, a project where we've looked back a little bit um, as well. I think we're sort of in quite an exciting transitional period at the moment. Morgan have got the CX platform cars coming through, which are sort of very forward thinking, constantly new and exciting things on those. But then we have these sort of legacy specials and limited editions happening as well, which are which are good fun. P101 um, was the code name for the Morgan Three Wheeler project before it was the Morgan Three Wheeler project. Interesting, right at the start of my tenure as a project I worked on first time around. So at the time there was just two of us um, and myself and my predecessor, we, we, were, um, we were looking at what this three wheeler could be. And some of the early inspirations were um, everything from sort of the camouflages used on warships um, through to land speed racer belly tanks, through to solid wheel motorcycles um, and all sorts of interesting graphics and features. Um, then throughout the years of Three Wheeler, we've seen lots of exciting new specials and limited edition cars. We did projects like the EV3, where we introduced these low slung running lamps and really looked at the stance of the car. Um, and we've just taken all those initial inspirations, all of those best bits throughout the years, and kind of revive the original P101, all the excitement that the three wheel was intended to have. One thing we always wanted to do was this closed cockpit tonneau cover. Um, and we really wanted that essence of prototype in these vehicles. So we've opted to kind of display the fiberglass weave almost as if this was the layup done for the prototype car. Um, and that natural sort of honey color, when you drive this on a, a bright sunny day, you get this like glowing yellow interior on the black. It just looks mega. Um, so yeah, the whole car has got a bit of an asymmetrical flavor too. Something which again was taken forward from EV3. And then there's just lots of nice little details like the torque markers on the tires, a bit of an aviation nod, the dazzle ship camouflage, which quite interestingly, the Navy have just painted one of their recent destroyers or exploring ships with this dazzle camouflage, which no longer has a place on a modern warship, but um, I'm guessing it's, it's entirely pretty cool. Because of you. I'm thinking that, so. That was you. I think they uh, looked at us, not me, but they, they looked at us and what we were doing at Morgan and thought, you know what, we'll paint a yeah. seven billion pound ship. Like. Boats are on school. P101s, are, guys, I've got an idea. We're good here. So I, I wanted to, to ask you, uh, you, you mentioned the, the, the ant going three wheeler, this. You were on the team that developed the original, mm. not the original original, because you're not 120 years mm. old. Um, but you, you're on the team that, developed the, the car that came back and that that's caused right. such an impact and now you're leading the charge on yeah that's right the new one yeah. that must be a bit weird for you uh, it's amazing it's nice to see um yeah it's nice to see with the impact the three-wheeler has made and what it now represents for the modern morgan um you know it's it's sad to see it go but it's also nice to see what the sort of the next step looks like um and obviously we can't say a great deal other than when the first three-wheeler arrived and then when the subsequent ev3 arrived these, these vehicles have an ability to really, you know, sort of surprise the automotive world. You know, no, there's no real baseline for a three-wheeler. <laughs> there's nothing to really compare it to. And we kind of, you know, arguably own the three-wheeler segment a little bit. Famous and three-wheelers through history. Yeah. <laughs> the Morgan, what, the Bond bug. Uh, and, and the, the Robin Reliant, Robin, yeah. and that's, that's kind of it. I probably shouldn't admit this, but the designer of the latest gen, Robin Reliant, now works for us. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> but um, absolutely no relationship to Robin Reliant in any way whatsoever, so don't be concerned. The new three-wheeler will bear no resemblance. The, the new th so the, you, you heard it here first. The new three-wheeler, <laughs> wheel at the front, uh, is, is uh, wheel at the front to do all the steering and two driven wheels at the back. That's, that's how it's going no, to no. no, we're going to keep it to the way that does work and go around corners, and that's this orientation. So I can tell you, exclusive here, there's two wheels at the front. Um, <laughs> and one, just one more, <laughs> at the back. But, I mean, fundamentally, when we, when we did draw this car originally, it was definitely taking a heavy inspiration from the later early century three-wheelers. So the 1929 Super Sports, streamlined bodies, the arguably the prettiest, most dynamic of the vintage three-wheelers was the inspiration behind what this looks like. I think Morgan now, with the new three-wheeler, have an opportunity to start looking forward. You know, how does this now established core product line move forward? You know, we can't just continue to look back into the archives and now, now we've re-established ourselves with this vehicle. What does it look forward? So I guess sometimes when we paraphrase it to whoever is sort of um, being demonstrated the new we're demonstrating the new three-wheeler too we kind of compare it to 
if this was sort of early century aircraft, almost a biplane or a fighter, an early fighter plane. Um, the new three-wheeler is more sort of less biplane and more kind of jet age. We're kind of moving forward 20 or 30 years in history retrospectively. So we've kind of gone early century to mid-century. And Does we're now... Do 3,000 miles <laughs> And again, I can't give away too much. I can see the marketing guys kind of uh, like this in the background. But um, <laughs> essentially, um, I think it's safe to say the new vehicle will be a big improvement dynamically in terms of performance, in terms of weight, um, in terms of capabilities as a sort of sports car. Um, and aesthetically, we're going to be walking forward in terms of the aerodynamics, in terms of the detail, um, and in, in terms of what it's consisting of. So, Just one final question, because I know you have to get back to MDEC and design the future of Morgan, but it's the most important, I think, about me through wheeler I know you can't tell us too much, no matter how much I badger you, uh, does it have a roof? I'm not sure we can confirm <laughs> or deny whether or not it has a roof. It might have a roof. Um, it might have a roof. I'm going to say there is absolutely no roof on the new three-wheeler. <laughs> As it should be. Mr Jonathan Wells, thank you so much for joining us and sparing your time and having a natter about what, what is coming in the future. For more here at Malvern, keep your eyes on Morgan's social channels and enjoy.